Hello and welcome to My Imperfect Knitting Life. This is episode 14 and if you've been following me you know it's a long time between episode 13 and 14 and I think the longer the time goes the harder it's been for me to get back into this. So I am literally just going to get in and get on with my podcast. So I live in the North Island of New Zealand on a one acre block. I have a mill and right here I can show you one of my people I share my mill with. Come on little red, come and say hello. So there's little red. Hey little red, what are you looking for? Oh, gonna give me kisses? Good girl. I'm just gonna put it down. All right, so little red lives here. We have two Gotland sheep, um, some um, chickens and um, obviously I share this um, life and experience with my husband Roger and I'm really trying to move out of um, a working in the community life into doing something sustainable from home and uh, I thought the mill would be a good thing but the mill's a whole story in itself so I will just um, carry on. Um, I went to the States and um, came back from there um, at the beginning of May and we're now middle of July so that's two and a half months and um, I had a great time so I went to see my son but while I was there I did actually do a couple of things um, well one big thing for the business which was go and see Junction Fiber Mill and I talked about that in episode 13 so I'm not going to to go there again I'm going to go straight on to um, um, what I want to talk to you in the, about in this episode. Um, I do briefly want to talk a bit about my time with Danielle because she was um, such a good support as well when I was in Santa Rosa and we hung out heaps. We um, had coffee knits and chats and she really tried to focus me on doing a business plan which I have started Danielle. So um, on a business plan she also took me places. We went to Legacy which is an op shop um, in in well, Sebastopol, which is quite close by, and it is an Aladdin's cave for anybody that loves crafty stuff. And I, I, I bought some stuff there, but I was really mindful of the fact that I had to somehow get it in a suitcase and bring it back. In fact, the one day she actually picked me up from Santa Rosa where I bought a suitcase and took me home um, so that I didn't have to yank it all the way and look like, unfortunately, one of the many, many homeless people that you see in, um, in, in Santa Rosa or actually in California so um, yes so I, I will talk a little bit more about my acquisitions later on and I probably will go back to the stuff that Danielle and I talked about when we were together what I do want to show and I honestly she um, she she's an artist she's a mixed media artist she does all sorts of things um, print print works um, painting and she also did a, a lot of fabric art or collage art and at the end I'm going to put up a, some um, pictures which show that that fabric art because she sent me some and it, I w I, when I went to her house I was like just standing there looking and really um, admiring her her work so I'll do that um, and yeah so let me just keep moving along because I've got a lot to talk about and I know that when I run out of steam I'm pretty much just going to stop and leave it at that because I'm sure you don't have a lot of time to um, spend on this and you know I've only got a certain amount of um, time to do this I've got heaps of other things I need to get on with and I want to enjoy the process because I do love it um, and I'm going to get on with it so let me see yesterday oh today's my birthday I'm um, 62 so I'm sort of taking stock a little bit and yesterday I had a great celebration with my family um, and um, so spending my birthday doing my podcast chilling out try not to do too much but let's get on with the show and tell so what have I made I have made two sorrel minis um, I'm going to put a picture of the sorrel mini up now and the sorrel minis I made for Sophie which is my youngest granddaughter and I used the yellow mustardy one I used an alpaca um, yarn which I think I got from Norway and then the um, blue one is the, the yarn that I bought, bought from Blue Mountain Spinnery which I hope I showed you in episode 13 and if I didn't I'm very sorry 
obviously there's nothing left of it. When I finished the Sorrel Mini top, I had like literally pff, that much um, yarn left. I was paying chicken yarn to the nth degree. And I think that's another one of those advantages of doing top-down construction because you can sort of finish the body and then you can just see how much you've got left to complete the sleeves. And your sleeve might just end up um, according to the, the, the amount of yarn that you've got. And for um, that particular project, it was always going to be a short sleeved item. So, yes, so the Sorrel Mini is by Wool and Pine, and it is definitely a pattern that I'd recommend. Um, that little stitch around the yoke is quite addictive. Um, I did see on Instagram somebody that I follow um, did the adult version, and it, it was lovely. So maybe I'll, I'll buy that pattern and um, give that a go sometime, but it's not in my, my, my project list yet. Um, the other thing that I completed was my, um, or the magnolia that I was making for Adrian. And a few days ago, I tried to do this podcast and I had the actual item to show. And I lost one half of the the. the, the clips so I couldn't actually complete that and that's why I've started again today but the magnolia was um, knitted in the holst garn and one strand and silk mohair in the other strand in a beautiful grey picture coming up now and I have done two of these before and when I was about to start this I really thought, oh, not another magnolia, and I didn't want to do it. So I contacted Adrian, I texted her, and I said, oh, can I make you something else? And I was thinking of things I could do, and she said, yeah, just send me the pictures. But I knew how much she really loved that lacy pattern, and so I thought, suck it up, buttercup, just get on with it. And once I started, I think it took me about three weeks of, I mean, solid knitting, a lot of knitting, but three weeks to get it completed. And she was so happy with it yesterday. And it just just made it worth worthwhile doing. Um, so I thought, well, that's probably going to be my last Magnolia for a while. And then I was looking through my patterns and found the Magnolia, which has got... Um, it's a chunky pattern and it's got the magnolia at the top and now of course most of my yarn that I produce is definitely what I would call a thick double knit or a a, a chunky Aran type yarn so I think that I'm going to have to place that on my project list because I need to have some sort of samples of what I what what people can make out of uh, the yarn so I'll show that um, then the next thing I wanted to talk about was my Utivis, which I haven't done any more of the Utivis since I last talked about it, but you know, just as a little recap, I've done the hood and I've done the body, I'm only on the sleeves, all I've got to do is finish the sleeves and then I can sort of cut the stick and put the pockets in, so I really feel like I need to move that on and I will do that. The problem is, let me look, I just love that. The problem is, is that I think it's a little small for me. So I'm kind of not feeling like, okay, well, when I get it done, I'm probably not going to be able to wear it. But Adrian would be able to use it or Taylor. Um, they'd be able to use it or Claire Marie. There's lots of people that would be able to use it. So I think I need to just get on, get it finished and um, see where I'm at. It's my birthday today, but next week it is Hannah's birthday. So Hannah is the person that helped me develop my logo. And she is one of the first babies I ever caught. And it's her 21st birthday next week. And I asked her mum, I said, um, Leanne, what do you think Hannah would like for her birthday? And she texted me back and she said, Hannah said she would love something that you've made with your yarn. So, okay, challenge on. So I decided, first of all, I was going to do the Carbeth cardigan because I thought that would be perfect. But then I realized that it probably needed double stranding and I didn't really want to do that. So I decided I would do the Felix cardigan, which I know many, many people have done. And... I literally have started this from fleece and it's going to be all the way to the finished product. 
so hopefully I've taken some photos of the fleece that I colored but if not I can show you the next bit which is the yarn that I made so here is the yarn in the color that she wanted which is a mustard sort of yellow and I also dyed up at the same time I need to show you this a matching silk mohair so I had a, a whole cone in the natural color and I dyed them up so they would match and started making the Felix cardigan which is actually meant to be a very loose knit and also a um, what do you call it a um, an oversized cardigan so I'm just I've done such a silly thing I haven't kept it at the beginning of the row so I can put it on and show you so I'm just quickly slipping the stitches off here excuse me and then I can show you the cardigan on so this is a top-down construction I've forgotten who it's by but I will put the name down uh, below now and um, it's a top-down construction I'm gonna put it on and show you got a raglan sleeve you start up at the neck so what they do what this um, designer has done is she doesn't start with the ribbing at the neck she actually just starts straight into the pattern and then after you finish then you pick up the um, front band which I'm doing at the moment and then you do the the neck so if you have a little look here you can see I'm going to take it up close see what see if it shows you yep look at that detail so it's going to be long sleeved and cropped so her hand is quite tall compared to me so I think I'm hoping this is going to be cropped because everything has been literally by by the eye in terms of what size I've picked and um, you know how long I've made it so um, I have completely I'm stuck in my chair here silly me I have completely um, completed oh, stuck on me actually the body and now what I've done and I often do this together I've picked up the buttonhole band on the one side and I've also picked it up on the other side at the same time red that's what it is it's red lying on my uh, yarn so I can't actually move it oh red come on get off um, so I do the buttonhole bands at the same time if I need to do them so that I know I'm picking it up in the same way because if you leave it you know a few days even you don't always pick it up in exactly the same way and then what I do is I check mm, that the two ends that they sort of match so that you don't have one shorter than the other or one looser than the other um, and when I went to Legacy in America I got these buttons which I showed you a little bit earlier and I think they are going to be perfect so these are vintage buttons I don't know whether they're from the 50s or whenever but I think they'll actually look really nice on there and those cost me a whole 40 US cents five fabulous buttons so yeah I wish there were six the pattern only calls for five but I think that the button holes are quite spaced out for my liking but I've only got five so that's what we're going to use so that is my Felix cardigan or I should say Hannah's Felix cardigan um, what else have I got works in progress that's probably all the works in progress but I've decided what I'm going to include in my works in progress is actually some of the or, or my completed works as well as actually some of the the yarns that I've made so when I came back from America a couple of weeks afterwards and this is also why I didn't quite get the podcast done was I had my first sale of yarn and I did that at the Rotorua Spin Inn and um, so I was kind of really focused on trying to get some stuff ready for that and I didn't have a lot um, but I did have something and I also did fleece for spinning because of course um, a lot of well most everyone there well just about everybody there was a spinner and uh, so I'm going to show you some of that 
Um, well, I'm actually going to show you some of the fleece first that I spun up. So this little basket here has got lots of different kinds of fleece in it. So this is Lamikins, my Gotland sheep, and you know, it looks super fluffy. No, not not one person bought any of this, which I absolutely love. So I am going to spin it up myself. Um, it doesn't really, it's quite short fibred and maybe, the, well, it's not too short. It might be why people didn't love it, I don't know, or maybe it was just because it was a plain colour and wasn't dyed, I'm not sure. Um, but that didn't really sell, so I'm going to spin that up and I'm going to make myself something out of that because that is, to me, celebration yarn um, from Lannikins. When we when we shared the, we got the sheep sheared, um, Lamikin's fleece came off beautifully, but the other one, um, did not. It was completely matted, so I'm going to try and do a sheepskin matte kind of thing out of it. Judy was telling me how you do that, so I'll find out a bit more about that. But I did do some other yarns. It was a beautiful blue one, which, um... I've completely used, ah, oh, this one here, I haven't got much left to show you, but that was a mix of mohair and sheep, and um, I got some really good feedback on how that spun up. Don't ask me which what sheep breed, because as you know, it's all been given and um, saved from various fire pits. This here, this green, is so scrummy, and that is a very high um, alpaca content, and I dyed that yarn. Um, and then I also had this um, pink set, oh the green, yes I did a little sample so I hand spun that and knitted it up, sorry my spinning's not that good so that's a little sample, um, I had a blue sample, if I find it I'll show you, um, and this, um, there was a yellow one that I did as well, I knitted up a little sample of that from a hand spun and I did a pink um, well that's my plane no well that's it I'm not going to show you any more of that because I showed quite a lot quite a lot more and some different colors but I've I think it's down in the mill and I'm not going to go down and get it I just literally need to get on and do this so of course I also went a couple of weeks after I got back um, literally days two days after the spin in on a dye workshop and that was a lot of fun um spending time with other people that are passionate about dyeing i went with my sister which was good fun and um basically we used three dyes three colors so there was a a, um, a blue a red and a yellow and what we learned was how to use um different not levels, I've forgotten the word now, but you know, like parts. So if you have nine part blue to one part whatever, this is the colour you'll get. If you get eight parts of one colour to two parts of the other. So we basically used three primary colours and that was it. And I'm just going to show you some of the things. I mean, this is, look at that colour. Then, you know, these are the, exactly the same dye pots, just used in different like saturations or different um, parts, you know, nine parts to one part. And then some of them was also done on a natural coloured yarn compared to a browner, you know, like a, a brown fleece base. I sort of came up with those sorts of colours. So honestly, it was just absolutely fascinating. I did do one where... Um, I did the nine parts to one part. I've kind of forgotten even what that's called, but I did a whole s selection of that. But I, I can't be bothered to get it out, sorry. But here, some more. So some of it was on cottons and some was on, um, yeah. I mean, wool, sheep's wool. So that's um, some of the stuff that we did at this dye workshop. You can see why I'm like really um, struggling to tell you about everything because there's so much to tell you. Um, what was wonderful about the dye workshop as well was literally the colours, the difference of colours. I mean, look at this, look at that purple, and then it turns into green. But, you know, I like dyeing, 
but I much prefer dyeing in the fleece and then blending and there are so many amazing indie dyers out there that I just don't even think what what do I want to compete with them no do I need to compete with them no my passion is really trying to use fleece that would otherwise be wasted and try and get that into the market and valued by knitters crafters and yeah and just sort of raise that awareness so really I'm just like when I came back from America and I got in the mill I sort of took all of that stuff that I learned in Vermont um, and started trying to put things into into place but I came up with more problems another um, we had a, a, um, a storm and another one of my motors blew because of either a surge or a drop in the power and I had to wait for my Sparky to come back from his holiday and then he put a new motor in for me and a new system that were you know a power surge system and um, and then I was like trying to put things through the pin drafter and having so much trouble with it literally one day I I just when I say lost the plot I just cried I was very upset I was angry I was frustrated I just literally thought why did you think this was a good idea why have you spent so much money on the machines on getting this shed set up to do this when clearly you don't have the skills you do not have the ability to get this done and I think you know what adds to my problem is that we are in New Zealand and other people with machines like this are not in New Zealand um, being able to buy the things that I need they're all overseas as well and it's it's actually not only really expensive but time-consuming just trying to find out where and how and to get the bits that I need um, and there's always this delay in, in how long it takes to get from wherever it is overseas to here. And a prime example of this is actually um, the cans that, that are used in the, in, the, in the mill. So the cans that I use, or, and the cans are basically when you're using the, the can coiler, it sort of rotates and comes out. And so when you look at Junction Fibre Mill, they have spring-loaded cans and it just so beautifully puts the um, sliver on there and keeps it nice and tidy so when they move it to the next place it's easy to move, it's easy to manage, it doesn't break off easily because it's nicely coiled in it so it goes into the next part of the process very well and um, we don't have that here and the, the cans are actually very narrow so when you do take things out it's very compact and it's actually quite easy for things to break um, and also they have a can coiler attached to the, the, the carding machine so I have a can coiler it's never been attached to the carding machine and so that's also on my project list to get that done but I, I just don't see the point of getting that attached until I have a spring-loaded can um, I'm going to stick a picture up of a spring-loaded can which um, is available from um, Italy and I got a quote for that and without paying importation duty which will be added on to that and then just it was two thousand eight hundred dollars for two cans and they won't arrive until probably November December I don't know when because Italy goes on holiday or this company goes on holiday in August and so it's not even going to go into the queue for work until September um, so that made me think okay well maybe there's somewhere else and well India is a, a, a for India or China so I started looking on the internet and um, now that I selectively I know how to put in the, the search um, words came up with a company in India and they are able to do two cans with the spring in it for 102 US dollars plus shipping and I think the other one was $500 per can including the spring plus the shipping so this is a massive difference in price um, so I'm going to take a punt on it I'm going to give it a go and hopefully end up with uh, a great 
well something that's gonna uh, make my life a little bit easier in the mill so that's yeah so it's the can coilers um, having both of those going and having good bins um, at the same time um, what I also did in the mill was when we were when I when I got back was thinking about how was I going to get all of the machines working I started thinking about the number of people that have really tried to help me um, and what kept popping up was actually my cousin that lives in Christchurch so we don't actually you know see each other very much in fact we haven't seen each other for years I found out later on um, yonks and yonks I thought we'd had a visit that um, apparently we'd never had so I have a cousin um, that lives in Christchurch, his name is Wayne, and he has spent, for the last 20 years, he spends six months a year working in Antarctica for the Americans, and then six months at home in New Zealand. And he's on his six months at home at the moment, and so I said to him, do you think that you could come up and have a look at my mill with me? And he said he'd love to. Um, and and we talked about possible dates and then I didn't hear from him for a couple of weeks so on the Friday I it was the oh the Easter weekend he tentatively said oh maybe I'll come up Easter weekend and so on the Friday the, the Thursday I messaged him and said have you got any idea when you think you might be coming up for this visit and he said oh I'm on the ferry so he was on the ferry from the South Island coming to the North Island I had no idea that um, he'd already started his journey and he arrived in the middle of the night and we had a good old yak yak for a couple of hours and then we got some sleep and um, went down into the mill so i to have a sip of my coffee because i'm like yabbling 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 so we went down into the mill and it went through all the different processes and he helped me sort some things out one of the things that we did was let me start at the beginning like the picker so the picker, if you remember when it was um, working and the, uh, in the dunny, was it was flying out of any little crevice possible, flying out. And he said, oh, you just need to slow the motor down. So that's what we did. We slowed the motor down. Um, so it was set at 60 and I think we slowed it down to 30. Um, but we couldn't test it while he was here because it was, that was the one where the motor had broken and my Sparky was in Rarotonga and I was just waiting for him to come back. But when he did come back, got the picker going and it is so much better. Um, I'm able to collect it in a bag inside the dunny now and it does fly out a little bit but like probably 5% flies out compared to what was flying out before. And it still runs through really, really well. So I'm going to be using the picker uh, much more effectively from now on. Um, so that was the picker. Then we moved on to the pin drafter. We didn't really do much at all with the pin drafter. He just showed me how to um, lubricate it with the... Um, mm, it's not oil. Um, grease. That, had to grease it properly and then we moved on to well there's not much to do with the card as well he showed me how to oil that how to grease that and then also I've got some bearings and one of the bearings um, is actually broken so he explained to me how to fix that the big one the really big one that we went through was you know my nemesis the the spinner and we literally took that to pieces cleaned it all up and then put it back together and that whole process of taking it apart and putting it back together gave me a huge understanding and also helped me not find it quite as daunting so um, again because I didn't have anything to put through I had to wait for the, the Sparky to come and put that um, motor back in um, and so from there we've really made so much progress on the spinner um, Judy's been a few times, I think about three times um, since then or four times and we've been able to put some product through the mill. I've done a lot of product on my own as well and um, I'm actually producing yarn. I felt like it was heaps but I weighed it the other day and it's just over 20 kilos which is not a lot. What I'm preparing that for is another um, possible, well it is a sale, it's three days in um, Tauranga. There's a show on all about crafts and um, so I've got a table there and I'm going to sell my my product there so let me just show you 
that is a basket and those are some of the colors that I have made um, I can take them out individually but I don't even think that's a little bit boring but I have also knitted up some samples what if I drop the pink one so this yarn here so this is all blended it's more than one color it's blended and that's knitted on a 4.5 millimeter needle which I can tell you now because I've got my little handy 4.5 millimeter needle is a 7 US so that was knitted on a 4.5 millimeter needle and you know it's quite a um, I wouldn't say overly firm but a nice firm fabric um, the Felix I've knitted in a 7 millimeter needle and that's my yarn and a seven millimeter needle is a 10.75 US well I have to cut I have to edit out my back that I obviously showed you there um, and so I've been thinking for the show I need to get some samples done so my mum is going to do some for me and Millie is knitting a Felix cardigan in my yarn and I've also started because one of my things I really want to make is the pressed flower shawl so I did a little sampler now, I don't think that the, that that color um, combination is what I'm going to do. In fact, I 100% know that it isn't what I'm going to do because I don't think the contrast is enough. Um, and so I have dyed up. Well, I dyed this one up thinking that might be a go. So I'm going to knit up a little sample of the natural color with that. Um, and I also did this one which is on a silver sli colored sliver so I dyed this in the sliver 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 and then spun it up on my mill um, and I love you know like that blue love it so much but I don't know that I like it in the skein um, I've had some really positive feedback on it but it's not necessarily what I want to do the pressed flowers shawl in um, but I'm going to give it a go um, the other thing that I want to do is a sole dot on the top and so today I dyed some mist color or grayish color for the bodywork um, if you've done the sole dot now then you know you've got to pick some really nice strong colors and then you have a neutral color and I'll talk about that on my next podcast because I've really got enough to talk about this time but you know I've definitely able to produce stuff so you know I've done this which is the dyed after the yarn has been made I've done where I've dyed the sliver and then I've um, spun it up and then I've also done you know this this is my blended stuff and if you look closely you can see this that's got a natural a green a blue and a yellow in it and you come up with this very sort of muted shade going on there um, oh this pink I found a little sample now so this pink um, was a color called magnolia which I dyed a whole heap of mohair and um, mixed it we put it well Judy put it through the picker for me we mixed it with um, a little bit of yellow and the cream natural face so she knitted up a little sample from hand spun she hand spun some of the fleece and i'm going to be selling a whole load of the unspun fleece at the the slivers at the show coming up so this one here judy spun up on her wheel and this is what i put through my spinning machine so you can see it's this is sort of a little bit more intense but it's a lovely lovely fabric um, and it's got mohair in so it's a little bit fluffy I don't even think you can see the fluff on there but you know it's a little hairy you you can see a little bit but you know I just really like that so I've you know I'm thinking to myself where am I going to go with this um, I can't just keep making yarn for me um, and I can't keep just giving it away I at some point have to make that into a way of um, selling it so I do know that probably I'm going to do a little bit of this but 
it's not where I'm going to go because there are so many amazing indie dyers. The only advantage to anybody of getting this from me is it's small batch, it's artisan, it's locally produced fleece, it's locally made, but there are so many indie dyers out there using commercial, commercially produced base yarns that I don't know that I need to do that. Um, and then this, you know, this is something, I just wanted to really test this because Junction Fiber Mill do this as one of their main sources of income, but I don't know that I really will go down that track. I love, at the moment, this is what I love, blending, colors. I'm sure that I could get some much brighter colors, but I'm quite enjoying the muted colors. Um, this is a bit brighter. My sister's knitting the Felix cardigan in this one. Um, you know, this is not a natural colour. This has also got pinks and other colours, yellow in it as well. So that's a pinky, more pinky base than the previous one I showed you. Then I've got, you know, look at this one. Love that. I made that for the show in Rotorua. I like that colour. I also did a sort of purple one love that color this was the multi that i did on the pressed flowers shawl that's in a corriedale so i love those colors but i don't you know they'll have to be for other somebody else not for me um oh and this was a lighter blue so i did a lighter blue which is blended and then that was also blended that's got a lot of mohair in it um, but it's a lot brighter, so we'll see. I'm sure that there's something in there for everybody. Did I show this one, the sort of denim blue? Not sure, but anyway, that's those. I do love them. I mean, if you put them together, I mean, look, that looks so nice. Um, I can't put the green in there because there, I've got another green, which I'm really hoping to show you, uh, Claire Marie, my daughter, um, I was inspired. She said, Mum, I really want to give it a go. I want to have another go at knitting. And I said, Clemory, the best thing you could do is learn to do a top-down um, jersey for yourself because it's A, very rewarding. B, you don't need to do any um, seaming. And also you can adapt the pattern so that it fits you the way that you want. And I saw Tin Can Knits have an app. And it's amazing. I'll put a, um, a little link or you if you look it up Tin Can Knits app you pick a pattern so I think there are nine free patterns in there and so she's decided she's doing the top called Flax and she's also doing it in a color that I made called Flax um, which is a beautiful green color and you put in your size and it tells you your needle number or you choose what thickness of yarn because you can choose a different thickness of yarn on there and it literally takes through every step of the way of that pattern and if at any point you like it when you do the cast on you can click into a link and it shows you the method to cast on and then if you're not sure how to increase once it gets to the increase part you click on that and it shows you takes you to a link of where you can how to do the increases also learning to do short rows so she was learning to do lots of things she hadn't done before so short rows um raglan increases um yeah so she's she she came at the weekend and we sat the two of us and watched a movie together and um did our knitting and it was lovely um so when she's finished that i can't wait to show it to you of course you know my imperfect knitting life so claire marie you're going to have an imperfect knitting life too you know she's pointed out a couple of um mistakes to me and i'm like it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter just finish it off and get on and wear it and you're going to love it it's going to inspire you and every time you do something you're going to learn more so yep i'm going to show you claire marie's um lovely jersey when she's finished it now i've got to have a little look at my list because i've totally forgotten what i was talking oh, i was talking about where to from here so my way to from here is i think i'm just gonna grow this and i've got to find a way of selling it i can't rely on three or four shows so i think maybe i'm going to have a look at the instagram route 
The other thing I thought of was, you know, whether do I start a Patreon page where I can um, offer this to my Patreon members first. Um, I've got to look at what's going to cost to ship it overseas. Um, is anybody actually interested? So if you are interested or if you've got any suggestions, just let me know. Um, but I, you know, I'm going to have that big chat soon with my husband and um, Judy and my friends that are interested and just see what maybe my next steps are. But I'm absolutely you know, curious and interested to know what you guys think as well. So what's next on the list? Oh, when Judy was here last week, we had a, a full day in the mill and there were all sorts of bits and pieces still left on the spools. And I said, you know what? We just need to ply it all up and get it off so that we've got some spare spools. Look at this. These are all the little odds and ends and all the little funny bits. I don't know, hopefully you can't hear my phone, but um, I've had lots of texts and calls, which I'm ignoring right now because of my birthday. But these are the little bits and pieces that we made with all the end bits. And she said to me, because I was like, oh, maybe I should just give those away. And she said, no, you should make yourself something with that. You know, that's a little piece of history in, in your journey. So I thought maybe I'd make one of those 10 stitch blankets and just keep adding on to it and just keep going until I've done enough. I could do one which is the first lot or I could just keep going until I've got a big blanket at the end. It could also be one of those projects that you just have sitting in your lounge and if somebody who knows how to knit comes along, they could add to the 10 stitch blanket. So, I really don't know that I want to talk any more today, but I have a whole heap more that I haven't talked about that I want to talk to you about. So I think maybe in three or four or five days, maybe next week, I will do another podcast and pick up on those topics that I haven't talked about. I'm going to put a whole load of photos at the end of this. I wish I could put some music on, but last time I put some music on I got copyrighted even though I thought it was free music. Um, so I'm not going to do it again until I really know I've got some free music. Maybe I should get my son to make something up. He plays the guitar or my, my granddaughter. But anyway, Thank you so much if you have managed to last the distance in this um, this episode. I look forward to doing the next one now that I've broken the seals, so to speak. And I would really hope that if you like it, give it a thumbs up, comment if you can, and subscribe. Um, also put your notification bell on if you want to know when I'm doing another one. I definitely, I promise, I will not leave it as long this time because um, I'm going to have um, lots to talk about even at the next episode. So take care. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.
Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-